I gotta send an answer to this. Oh, vous voulez écrire un télégramme pour moi, et c'est la réponse. Ah, non, oh. baby. <laughs> you're not only cute, but you're smart. Come on with me. Everything okay. You're ready to shove off. Very good, sir. Yes, I should say, very, very good, sir. Yes, sir. You're in what I would call trouble. We certainly are. Not we, Captain. You. Why did you get underway? You know that girl was on board. Your orders, sir. 
I was drunk. You've told me often enough that my job is to navigate this ship and keep my mouth shut. Now, you'll have to answer the right, not me. We've got to get rid of her, Wilson. We can't put back to port now. They've trapped us all into jail. And you can't risk landing her at one of our ports of call. Report her as a stowaway. That'll cover you. Then you can lock her up where she can't see anything she shouldn't, and we'll drop her someplace where she can't make trouble. Madame? Monsieur, vous parlez français? Mais oui, madame, je suis français. Oh, monsieur! <laughs> madame, je vous en supplie, vous êtes. Madame, vous êtes malade! Vous êtes... Help, somebody, quick, woman's fading! Vous savez, je me suis trouvée toute seule. Alors, il m'a appris au bureau de poste, je, je portais le télégramme, et je mettais tout en ordre. Un beau tabitaine du bateau, et. Oh, monsieur, si seulement c'était qu'un cauchemar. Adieu, c'est éclat de. The mauvaise dream, some horrible nightmare. Oh, sometimes I tell myself, uh, réveille-toi, réveille-toi, and I think I wake up, and I am at home. But it's not a bad dream, monsieur, you know. It's true, it's true, I am here now. No, 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 take it easy, take it easy. I want to go home. You don't understand I want to go home? Sure, I understand, kid. Everybody down here wants to get home. But you can't get a boat for France from this place. Come on. The only place you can get a boat for France is at the Panama Canal. Panama Canal? How far is the Panama Canal, monsieur? Genosaki Tanoki. Born 1894. Formerly Lieutenant Commander, Imperial Japanese Navy. Retired February 1933. Started in Avenida Central as a dealer in curios. You know anything further, Ellsworth? Yes, sir. We visited Japan January 1934. Returned yesterday, landed in Frisco. Visited the Bank of Commerce. We joined the ship an hour before sailing. Oh, Mr. Radcliffe. Eh? There's a ship you arrived in, just pulling away from the dock. Nice craft. Sports accommodation's a bit restricted. You want to look at these photographs of Tanoki? Yes. Hmm, might as well. Now you've seen our entire gallery. Ever hear of anyone named Reiner? Oh, we are. No one named Reiner around here. What's his description? I don't know of anyone who has ever recognized him. What's on your mind? An attempt to damage the canal? During the passage of the United States fleet. This man, Reiner, what's his nationality? Nobody knows. He's recognizable only by his methods. One thing, he always works through a woman. Uh, you'll find plenty of women here. And the woman is always mysteriously killed. Well, if he works with enough of them, this place may become quite bearable. Yes, but he must be recognizable. Someone must know his face. No. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if he turned up as a member of your staff. <laughs> One of these days, I expect to find he's going about as me. <laughs> Look here. 1826. That Lama put himself at the head of affairs in China. The situation suddenly cracked, and he slipped through the fingers of the Chinese authorities. He turned up later as chief engineer of the Potosi Munition Works. You remember, they were blown up. He got away. In 1932, there was a big communist rising in Germany. Behind the scenes was a man named Reinecker. Here he is. The same man. That's the man I'm after. Oh, come in, Crobbett. Well, uh, don't let me disturb you. Not at all. Not at all. Come in. Meet Mr. Ratcliffe from England. 
do? Dr. Crawford is from the University of Wisconsin. How are you, General? Sit down. Sit down. No, thanks. Thanks. I'm not going to stay. He's down here making a study of tropical diseases. Oh, tropical diseases. Mm -hmm. Did you ever study tropical diseases in China? Oh, yes, yes. China, Japan, Russia, Germany. Germany? How'd you come to be studying tropical diseases in Germany? At the state clinic. Yes. I suppose you find the canal zone a great field for it. Oh, yes, yes. General, you'd be surprised at some of the pests I find breeding around the locks. Really? Discovering Iglosinus papalis, or Stegonia colopus? Don't tell me you're an entomologist, too. Oh, I dabble a bit. I should be very much interested to hear more of your researches sometime, Doctor. Glad to, any time. Why not dine with me tonight? Fine, where? Palace Hotel, 8 o'clock. All right, that's the date. And after we finish discussing insect life, I'll take you over to the Pacific Gardens and show you a few odd human varieties. <laughs> also, some swell entertainment. I'll see you later, General. When you're not so busy. I think I'll find Dr. Corbett very interesting. Perhaps you'd better not tell him who I am. <laughs> Scotch highball. Oh, I suppose they wouldn't have Vassy's ale. If you care anything about your liver in this climate, you'll stick to Scotch. Oh, I forgot. You're a doctor. Two Scotches and sodas. Oh. Interesting type, that waiter. Cephalic index 60. Cranial capacity 94. I should say 95. Facial angle minus 7. Oh, student of criminology, huh? I have a bowing acquaintance with. Some of the criminal types. Mr. Noki, welcome back. I'm flattered. You came to see us your first night. I brought you this little Netsuki. Inside you will find an old Japanese poem. Oh, you nice man. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh, good evening. May I sit with you, Dr. Corbett? Sit right in and have a drink with us. Thank you. Meet Mr. Ratcliffe from London, England. How do you do? My name is Tanoki. Yes, I know. Very glad to meet you. How did you leave them all in Japan? Very, as you Americans say, swell. But I am not an American. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Don't be nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm lonesome. I am very happy. You look it. It gives me great pleasure. And me a pain. 
to present to you, for a change, a singer who can sing without sitting or leaning on a piano. A French girl from France. A singer who can sing and will in her native tongue. French. Fr fr Mademoiselle Marie Gallant. Hmm. What have we here? Good luck, Jim. Who is she? She's a new one on me. I never saw her before. She doesn't lean on a piano. She sits on a table. You sat on it. Nothing could hold it up. Il faudra nous connaître un peu mieux. Pardi, je sais bien ce que tu veux. Mais pour l'instant, je ne peux rien dire. Peut-être bien que je crée un peu. Beaucoup, passionnément, à la folie, pas du tout. Je n'en sais trop rien moi-même encore, au deuxième abord. Peut-être bien que je t'aime un peu, beaucoup, passionnément, à la folie. Pas du tout. Il faut voir avant tout si t'es jaloux, un peu, beaucoup, ou pas du tout. Maybe they have part of you, of me, oh much, passionately, even madly, not at all. If you promise you will not be jealous, Alex, a match, not at all. Would you gentlemen like to dance now? Miss Tapia, who is French girl? I'll bring her, and she can tell you. Excuse me. I'll be back. Who's the French girl? Search me. She just blew in yesterday. Haven't got a line on her yet. Did she get a man? Good evening, Dr. Crawford. Good evening, Mr. Bogart. What's the girl's address? Don't know. Get it. All they want you to do is sit at their table and have some drinks. All of us girls do that. Drinks? Liqueur? I don't like. He makes my... my head... goodbye. You don't have to drink liquor. No? Of course not. Do what the rest of us do. Just order a special. It's only orange juice and water. And every time you drink a special, you get a rake off. 25 cents. Four francs. Savvy? When they ask you to have a drink, you say, give me a special, please. Give me, please, a special. That's it. And if you drink enough specials, you'll have money to pay off the French debt. No, I want you to make enough to go back home. Excuse me, Mr. Radcliffe. If you were making a poem, would you say, a pepper seed? Give it wings, it is a flying dragon. I'm afraid I've never seen a flying dragon. Or would you say, a flying dragon, take away its wings, it is a pepper seed. I'm a bad judge of this poem. I detest pepper. My idea of a poem is 15 men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho and a bottle of rum. My friend, that is not a poem. That is a sailor's song. You're both wrong. It's a gramophone record. Gentlemen, this is Marie. Good evening, please. Good evening. Won't you sit down? This is Mr. Ratcliffe from London, England. How do you do? Mr. Tanoki from Japan. And my name is Crawford. I'm from Wisconsin. I am Marie from France. We are, what is, League of Nations. Not quite so quarrelsome, I hope. Do you have a drink? Give me, please, a special.
Have another? Give me, please, a special. Have another. Oh. If you don't stop drinking that orange juice and water, you'll have me burst into tears. Come on, put that away and have a real drink. You will speak too fast. I don't understand. Please, talk to me in French. No, no, no. My French is only for use in the bosom of my family. Oh, you kidding me. Please. It's no good. Me no speaky. Oh, je suis sûr que vous parlez, non? Mm. Et vous, monsieur, you speak French now? Not to say I speak French exactly. Matter of fact, I, I understand it better than I talk it. Nobody speaks French here. C'est horriblement triste. I'm sick for my home and my friends. I want to go back to France. Kind of tough, huh? Don't you like the people here? Yes, they are nice. They seem to think your song was very nice. Especially that big man who was sitting over there. Oh, did you see him look at me when I sang? Vieux crétin. Who was it? His name is Brogard. He runs the French Bazaar. Bazaar? Shop French? 94 Avenida Central. Brogard is French. Well, he's shop is. lady just entered Parisian Bazaar. It would seem to be desirable to know more about French lady. propriétaire, n'est-ce pas Vous êtes français, moi aussi. Oh, dites-moi quelque chose. Dites-moi, dites-moi. Do you speak English? Yes, I speak English. But you're French, no? No. Oh, I come here only because I think you are French. And maybe you want to help me to go back home. Nobody wants to help me. Surely you're French, monsieur. You have the French name. Oh, well, you see, for a Parisian bazaar, you must have a French name. What you really are doesn't matter. You can be anything. But you speak French? Yes, but I don't speak it very often. Oh, I shall never go back home again. You want to go back very much? Very, very much, monsieur. No, no. Please, don't cry. Pauvre petite. There, that's French for you. Come here into my office and I show you anyway some French books that you can take to read. And perhaps someday when I'm busy, you can help me with my business. Oui, monsieur. And perhaps I might be able to help you. Maybe to go back home. Monsieur! <laughs> monsieur! Oh, merci, monsieur. See you there. Oh, merci, monsieur. <laughs> this blonde girl resting is like flower in sunshine. But when she moves into affairs of men, she may be like tiger in mischief or dappled fawn in terror. Why not be content to remain a flower? French lady has now gone into back room bazaar with Brogard. It would seem to be desirable to know how long lady remains there and whether or not she makes a purchase. Oh, mon Dieu, comme c'est beau, comme c'est beau, Mr. Brogard. You like it? Oh, it's marvelous. But it's Paris, Place de la Concorde. Look at the people. Mm -hmm. And look at this one. Mr. Brogard. It's the coast of France where my home is. Look, my home. Look. I have six boxes of these pictures. You can come any time you like. Yes. At any time. 
Well, that will be all for today. We'll come tomorrow at the same time. Oh, there's fresh doll. Take it, my dear. It's just a present. I give it to you. At any time, madame, always delighted to serve you. Don't forget tomorrow. You must see my stock of perfumes and silks. I have beautiful French perfumes, and we have face creams and powders direct from Paris. Everything for the toilet. Good day, madame. Please, come again. Ah, Dr. Crovitz. Yes, sir, can I serve you? Hello. Well, it is Marie. Going back to play with dolls, huh? What? I hope you didn't charge you too much for this. Oh, no. <laughs> Be at the Pacific Gardens tonight? Mm -hmm. I'll see you there. I hope so. How's trade? Well, it's not so good. I was afraid your trade might be bad. Do you want to make it better by purchasing something? Yeah, have you got any insect powder? What kind of insect powder? By the kind that kills poisonous insects. <laughs> <laughs> looking for? Uh, Where'd you learn to be a barber? In jail. What are you in jail for? Uh, shaving the gentleman too close and... Wait a minute! Wait a minute! What are you playing, a maypole dance? And you with a fan down there. Have them throw away their crutches and go to work, will you? I want something bright and snappy. And if I don't get it, the boat leaves Friday. Okay, stick up. Ready, girls, go. One, two. Oh, do like that, Mr. Flower. Hmm? Hmm. Like me? Hmm? What? Make your face look like mine. Give me that razor. Uh, get that done quick. Come on, come on, stand over here and hold it up. Okay. Hold it up, up. Yes, now down, down. Hold it so I can see. Yes, yes. Mr. Flowers, can I finish that, please? Whose face am I shaving, yours or mine? Yours, I think, is mine, and bleed. What's going on here? You look like you need a doctor. I do. Do you know where I can find a real one? Give me that mirror. Go down and swab up the bar. Who's been here this morning? Tanoki. What did he want? He wanted to see the French dame. Have you seen anything of the Englishman? Yeah. He breezed in, knocked over a jolly well brandy and soda, and breezed right out again. Following Tanoki? Uh-huh. Mr. Plaster wants a test. That's what he wants. Plaster. Uh-huh. You got a visitor. Huh? Right here by the back door. What? Over. 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 Bonjour, Marie. Bonjour, mon ami. You did not come to see me. No, because I had to... to rest. Can you come this afternoon? I have something interesting to tell you. That French girl seems to have a lot of visitors, don't she? Uh-huh. Back to the Parisian Bazaar, I see, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a rare set of these clothes. Did you have to pay a lot of money for that? Mm -hmm. No, not much. Oh. Maybe he gave it to you, huh? You like? Yes. Beautiful. Sure it is. Look, it's French. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You want to come here? Yes, yes, sure, thanks. Thanks very much. You like? Yes. Yeah. That's very nice. Would you sit down? After you. After you. Oh, après moi. <laughs> après moi. Oh, yes, that's the French of it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me a cigarette, please. Cigarette? Sure. How do you say that in French? 
why you see Gareth in his place. Sounds kind of nice that way. You like? Yes. Do you want I teach you? Sure. Oh, je vais vous apprendre le français. <laughs> you talk to that fellow Brogard at the Parisian Bazaar in French, too? No, we talk English. You talk English? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? Two French people talking English. But he's not French. He's not French? What is he? I don't know what he is. Are you going to give it to help him in any way? Perhaps, sometime. Mm -hmm. How? I suppose with the shop. With the shop? Well, I'd make sure about that if I were you. Oh, you know, I want so much to go back in my home. And you have a home like Marie that, uh, that makes you want to go back there so much. Oh, monsieur, he sees. Oh, I see. So it's like that, is it? Oh, monsieur, my home is beautiful. The whole church, the trees, the flowers. Tell me how you happen to be here instead of back in that beautiful home of the gooses and the cows all say good morning to you. Oh, I tell you if you like, but it's very bad. Go ahead, go ahead. The same story you told the Brogard? I am not told Brogard. The skin sham Jimmy was made for me, made for me, all for folks like me. Reason is done so nice and easy. Like me. Reason is done so nice and easy. What do you think you're doing? That's why I asked you. That's Shim Sham with music. You Shim Sham out of here. What's good about it? What, sir? I just listened to the most amazing story I ever heard in my life. Mm. Yeah, this French girl. Hasn't got a relative in the world. Was kidnapped somewhere on the French coast. Dumped off the ship down in Yucatan. Did you ever see a gal around here that didn't have a story? I got a hunch this kid's all right. Give me a piece of paper. I'm going to cable the French government. You're what? I'm going to cable the French authorities. Now, wait a minute. Don't give me that kind of bunk. Give me a piece of paper. Come on, hurry up. What kind of bunk do you like? Chinook, he's fishing down the canal after the old French dredges. What's he fishing for? Well, maybe some caviar for the French dame's dinner. We talked to her a long time last night. Does that sound like the bunk do? Didn't I shim, sham, shimmy you out of here? What do you want? Man out there with some kind of something he want to give to Miss Marie. Who is he? Oh, he's a yellow man. He ain't Chinese, he ain't Philippine, he ain't Japanese, he's just yellow. It's that clerk at Tanoki's. What's he got? No, the something he want me to give. Then I told him I didn't know that I killed the man. Get it and bring it to me. Oh, hello, Mr. Brogard. Yes, sir. That's a beautiful set of chessmen you have there. Yes, fine. And they're all hand-carved. Chinese? No, sir. This is an old Persian set. How much? Sorry, not for sale. Oh, I'm sorry, too. It reminds me of an old set that used to be in a museum in China. Perhaps it's the same set. Yes, that has occurred to me, too. We must ask Mr. Tinoki. He exchanged it with me for some other goods. How did he get them? We must ask Mr. Tinoki. Yes, I will. I'm going over to see him now. But Mr. Tinoki's away from his shop today. Oh. When will he be back? Not before this evening. Ah. Thank you. We must ask Mr. Tinoki. We must always ask Mr. Tinoki. Good sport? Having excellent sport. Fresh water fish. Huh? <clears throat> I didn't know those kind of fish found their way into this lake. You find fish in all kinds of unlikely places. That's an interesting sinker you have. This? I see you have a tallow. That, 
That, of course, is to tell you the nature of the bottom, huh? Certainly. It is very important. This kind of fish only congregates on a sandy bottom. And only at certain depths, too. That's why you have your line knotted in, in fathom length. And what are you doing here, Dr. Crawford? Fishing, too? I'm looking for a large and very dangerous mosquito. Oh, by the way, I delivered your letter to Marie. My letter? Yes, your clerk brought it over to the Pacific Gardens, and I took charge of it. Oh, yes. You, you see, we are both interested in poetry. I sent her a quotation of Japanese poets. Yes, I know it. You know what was in my letter? I know that you're both interested in poetry. I am also interested in American fleet. Yes, I was also aware of that. There seems to be no limits to your knowledge, Dr. Corbett. Were you also aware that at this moment the American fleet is sailing into Anchorage? And now I will abandon you to the mosquito. to help you to go back to France, you must help me. This is my big chance to do trade. The officers will come to the Pacific Gardens, make friends and bring them to my shop, and I pay you commission on every purchase they make. Well, I will do my best. Make friends with the officers and try to find out what day and time the fleet passes through the canal. But that is on account of my stock, you see. If they are to be here a long time, I must get more goods. Three things to remember. The time and day the fleet passes through the canal to bring the officers to the shop, and, important, you tell no one. Well, if you do, other merchants will do the same, and I won't benefit from our little plan. <laughs> oh, I understand. I'm not blaming you, telling me with the rules. You did what any self-respecting person ought to do. I broke your heart. Now we're apart. Serves me right for treating you wrong. You were good to me, mighty good to me. I'll admit I don't deserve an ounce of sympathy. I should have known I'd be alone. Serves me right for treating you wrong. Wrong, I was wrong and. a very beautiful Chinese set of chests. Genuine ivory. Very rare quality. The one I'm interested in is the one you sold to Brogar. You must ask Mr. Brogar. He won't sell. Still, you must ask Mr. Brogar. Haven't got a knife. Like this, have you? not know what to do with a knife like that. No? Mightn't it be fishing over by the French dredges? I should think it would be more useful in the kitchen to clean the fish after they have been caught. That's your stock, Ma. It's a Japanese stock, Ma. Might we have your clerk in for a minute? Not if you have come here to inform me that he has contrived to get himself murdered in the American Canal Zone. You come in! Well, now that I am in, what do you want? I let Tanoki know that that clerk of his delivered a message to me before it reached Marie. Now he's dead. Oh, Tanoki? No, the clerk. Who nudged him? That's for us to find out, son. Well, maybe he bumped himself off. Yeah, 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 he must have bumped himself off. Shot himself from behind through the heart and then ran around in front of himself and plunged the cheese knife into his own gizzard. Never been done before. Shot and stabbed, eh? Shot with a 283 automatic, foreign make. 
Stabbed with a long, thin knife with a Japanese mark on the handle. He didn't fool around, did he? No. Find a piece of thing together now. Hello? All right, I'll hang on. I'm waiting for a call from Washington. That's the town where my second wife lives. Hello. What do we do now? Hello. Tanoki's letter made a date with Marie to meet him in his shop after she finishes work tonight. Hello. Where are the riches? Haven't you got any? Help yourself. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. French girl named Mary Gallant? Yes. Write that down. Yes, Crawford. Tenoki. T-E-N-O-K-I. Write that down, too. Hello? A man named what? Just a minute. Oh, Ratcliffe. Well, I'll inquire at Scotland Yard. They're through to London on the other wire. Uh, in a minute. Uh, yes, Corbett? I leave that to your discretion. I have London on the phone now. Goodbye. Commissioner of Police, Scotland Yard, sir. This is Washington, D.C., Bureau of Investigation. They're asking if we know anyone called Ratcliffe. What? Who is he? Admiral Ratcliffe is head of the British Naval Intelligence Service. Not an admiral? Does he say he belongs to us? Maybe he's an imposter then. Get Paris on the private line. Japanese name who? Tenoki. Get me the prefecture of police in Paris, please. There was a man of that name in the Japanese embassy. No trouble at all. Prefecture of police. Uh, I'll call you back later. Place. Goodbye. Paris, sir. Bonjour, mon cher colleague. Oui, mon cher confrère. Marie Galland. No, we have no record of the name. If you will find out our town and district, I can make inquiries. Delighted, at all times. Who? Spell it, please. P. T. T. E. N. O. K. I. Tenoki. With me. Talking is not good with hungry men or drowning women. Here are dry clothes. I am not cold. I cannot stay. Tell me what you want. You may change behind screen. now by way of Japan. You stick around here a little while. I'm going across the street. Yeah. May I give you a cigarette? I would offer you some coffee, but unfortunately, my servant. You knew my servant, mademoiselle? A very obliging fellow, but too talkative. However, 
We will not talk anymore. Please, monsieur, tell me what you want. You know the French dredges? Brought here by the great Frenchman who began the Panama Canal 60 years ago. France began Panama Canal? France began what America has completed. Thousands of French lives were given for this canal. Many more may be needed to keep it open. Japanese lives, English lives, the lives of any of us. But has not Mr. Brogar told you about this? No, monsieur. Mr. Brogar is so interested in the canal. You should ask him to take you to see the French dredges. Perhaps they might provide you with the means of returning to France. How do you mean, monsieur? In Japan, we say, there are great secrets and a price for keeping them. And sometimes... But I don't know any secret. And sometimes, we say, there is an even greater price for not keeping them. You can learn secrets. What about French dredging? You might learn why it was so unhealthy for Tonoki's servant to be there. In Japan, we say, take knowledge wherever gained and bless the giver. Also, we say, knowledge can always find a person. And uh, did you get the information you wanted from Mr. Tenoki? I got a good deal of information one way and another. Tenoki's clerk was discovered murdered, you know. Down by the French dredges. Check. You're in check. I send back Kimono Kimono. Keep it, please, at present. To remind you of our conversation. Trying to get information from the officers about when the fleet will move through the canal? Yes, sir. This is very serious. We'll send for her. Oh. May I suggest that you don't put the girl under restraint? She's obviously trying to get this information for some other person. Someone who has a plan to carry out while the fleet's in the canal. Someone who works through a woman. Man Rhina, you were talking about? Yes. This is the first definite clue we've had that Reiner is here. She's probably with him at this very moment. Only because he sent and asked me to go. Well, what do you do? Go to any man's room at 3 o'clock in the morning just because he sends for you? Oh, it's my affair, I suppose. No. Well, sure, it's your affair. I'm just trying to figure you out, that's all. I thought you were a decent girl, Marie, worth trying to help. Looks to me like you run after anybody that blows a whistle. Oh, please don't talk like this. I'm trying to steer you out of trouble, Marie. Now, what did Tanoki want you to do? Nothing. All right. Looks to me like I'm butting in on some kind of a romance. Are you jealous again? Not on your life. I'm not the kind of a guy who goes around being jealous of a girl who's anybody's woman. Be careful what you think. You spend quite a bit of time with Brogard, too, don't you? Thank you very much. Nice gentleman. Are you so stupid? You cannot say if I want to make money like this. I go back to France right away. Well, now, wait a minute, Marie. I didn't say anything no, about... No, because you're afraid to say, but you, you think it who you are. You are horrible. Now, wait a minute, Marie. Marie. Don't come near me. Now, Marie, listen to me, will you? I don't want you to speak with me.
Marie, I'm sorry I spoke to you like that and hurt you. I didn't mean a word of it. It doesn't matter. Yes, it does. It matters to me a whole lot. Marie, I believe every word you've told me. Now, I want to help you to go home. You're a nice girl, Marie, and I'm just trying to steer you right, don't you see? Now, will you go right away and see the French consul? He will do nothing. Well, will you try? Just do that to please me. And if he won't do anything, I'll get you out of here myself. Now, will you go and see him right away? Yes. Well, go on, then. Hurry up, now. What are you hanging around for? Get a move on. I go. I want you to promise me not to see any more of these men here. Will you promise? I promise. That's fine. I'll drop in on you later and get the lowdown. When you come to my house to get the lowdown, I'll give you some coffee. That'll be swell. Crawley, General Phillips wants to see you at his office at once. What for? I think he'd prefer to tell you himself. It would have simplified matters a lot if you told us about yourself from the start, Crawford. But I couldn't do it, General, I tell you. My orders from Washington were to work alone. Now I admit I'm stumped. I'm suspecting everybody. I even checked through to Scotland Yard on you, Radcliffe. You thought I was Reiner? I had as much right to suspect you as you had to suspect me. And I still believe that girl's story. She was kidnapped somewhere in France and dropped off over here. And now she only lives to get back home. What is your interest in the girl? That's got nothing to do with it. Robert, that sort of thing doesn't mix with our work. It's our responsibility to guard the canal and keep it open. And we have no right to allow personal considerations to influence our thoughts one way or the other. You sit coming up the channel. I'll put the glass on. But, General, there's nothing personal in this. The girl just doesn't belong here. She didn't ask to come here. She wants to go home. Deep sea Sister. tramp. About 2,000 tons. Been a long cruise, judging by her paint. And there's a reason why she shouldn't go home. If necessary, I'm going to send her. What did you say? Yes? What is it? Cable thing. Oh, this is for you, Crawford. I'll get this ship's name in a minute. Marie Gallant, accused stowing away on steamship Hetty King out of Saint Briac, province of Bordeaux. Please investigate and, if necessary, detain. This is a very dangerous woman we're dealing with. And there can be no question of her going away. She must stay here. She must have no idea that we know anything. Every movement she makes must be watched. Crawford, you'll see to all this personally. Understand? Yes, sir. What was the name of that boat? The Hetty King. That's funny. This ship coming in is a heady king. What? Her name's a heady king. General, if you should want me for anything, you could reach me at the Fort Captain's office. Captain. What was your last port of call, Captain? Took on cargo at Yokohama. These cases of Japanese dry goods? Yes, sir. All consigned to G. Tanoki. You made it through passage here from Japan? Took on coal at Pango Pango. I see you signed on two new hands at Shanghai. Yes, sir. Let's have a look at them. Aronson, Yermak. All right. Either of you men speak English? Sure. Oh, yes, sir. Ever been in the States? Sure. Yes. Why did you sign these men on? Well, two of my men died. And I had to bury them at sea. They ain't do that. All right, Captain. Get your log, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, please. Yes, sir. This is the screwiest ship I ever saw. Why do you suppose they want all these monkeys on board a ship this size? To play the pipe organ and sing bass. Look about as useful as umbrellas on a fire engine. Mm. Here you are, mister. Did you dock at San Briac in France about six months ago? Yes, sir. You reported a stowaway, a girl. That's right. How do you come into this? Well, the French authorities are trying to trace her. Well, I put ashore at Yucatan for fresh water, and she got away. She got away? Well, we were just laying out at anchor, and during the night, she just disappeared. 
Can't keep a girl in irons in the tropics. Hey, Wilson. It's about that stowaway girl. Yes, sir. She got away in Yucatan. Must have made up to one of them harbor boatmen. Did you do anything about it? Well, we were six hours out at sea before we knew she'd gone. It's all entered in the log there. All right, Captain. Your papers are all in order. Here's your entry. Thank you, mister. Captain, uh, you have no idea where the girl is now, huh? Maybe dead, for all I know. It's just guesswork that she got ashore. Bonjour, Marie. Bonjour, monsieur. I'm very busy in cooking. Why haven't you come to see me at the shop? Oh, I am the busy. Cooking all the time. Ah, it's every day. Well, I come to pay you your commission. Oh, no, I don't want. I make $500 selling to the officers. 10% is for you. When you find out for me the day the fleet passes through the canal, I give you your ticket to France and more money. No, no, I don't want. Huh? I don't want. That's funny. Oh, no, Mr. Bogart, it's not funny. I don't want. You don't want to go back to France? Oh, yes, I want to go. Not I go to someone away. Oh, I see. Wonderful. Until your friend changes his mind. Oh, he will not do that. This nice gentleman who will not do that. Well, when you find out that he is just like any other man, you come right along to the store and your commission is still waiting for you. Also, your ticket to France that you can still earn. Goodbye, you must go back and be busy with your cooking. I sent you a beautiful present to the boat when that gentleman has taken your passage. Au revoir, Marie. Arrivederci. Auf Wiedersehen. Bon voyage. No, no, please, please, Marie. I don't, don't go to all that trouble. Oh, I just not want to be ready for one hour now. Yeah, well, honestly, I don't want it, Marie. As a matter of fact, I just had my lunch. Oh, you know, I go see the French consul this morning. And he tell me, you can't do nothing. Shut them off. I don't believe you French. Go, 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 and not come back. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Marie. Oh, it doesn't matter. Come, sit down. Yeah, well, uh, uh... Why are you so malheureux? He's not glad, not, not glad? What? I'm grinning from ear to ear. What, do, what makes you think I'm not glad? Marie, look. Sit down. Sit down. I, I give for you French omelette. No, I just had my lunch. Oh, it's good, French omelette. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, I, look, look, Marie, are you sure you've told me all there is to tell me about how you came to leave France? Sure, I tell you everything. I take a telegram to the captain. The captain tell me, go, come with me on the boat for the ocean. And I come, and he lock me up, and the boat starts. And you don't remember the captain's name or the name of the ship? No, but but I have. You have? Yes, I have. You... I see the telegram because when I come back to France, I won't have the name. Are you sure you've got it? Look, that is the telegram. Sent from Panama, huh? Oh, I don't know. Holy smoke. Why didn't you give me this before? You don't have to buy it. Proceed immediately, Caracas, Venezuela, for Christopher. Pick up special cargo, Yokohama and Rendezvous Canal, six months from date. Reiner. Now that explains both the crew and the cargo. 
and it was brought in by a Japanese boy. The clerk at the post office is positive of that. And his signature on the original is in Japanese. Not Tanoki. Oh, no, that'd be too simple. But Tanoki was here at the time, and the cargo from Yokohama is consigned to Tanoki. Well, what's the nature of the cargo? Why, it's listed as dry goods. But I've arranged with the customers to be notified as soon as it's brought up for clearance. Look here. Suppose we compare my rhino photographs with your photographs of Tanoki. Yes, sir. That ship, the head of King, is out in the channel and she's starting up the canal. Well, she couldn't have unloaded her cargo already. Has Tanoki got scared and left his stuff aboard? General, I'm going to use your phone. Go ahead. Give me the port captain's office. Back room. Eddie King did not unload any cargo. Right, thank you. This French girl sees a great deal of Tanoki. Now, I suggest... Let's leave the French girl out of it. This telegram confirms her story. It seems to me to have no bearing on the matter, whatever. This girl is an innocent party, and I refuse to persecute her. My duties don't require that. They prohibit it, Crawford. And so does my position as governor. There's a great difference between persecuting an innocent person and trying to investigate the conduct of a suspicious character. That girl is accused of being a stowaway and trying to spy on the movements of the fleet. And nothing has happened to dispose of either of those charges. I Wait. say, look here. Could these two men be the same? Reiner and Tinoki? I'll just pencil a moustache on the llama. There's a tourist bus in half an hour. And we shall go on a sightseeing trip of the locks and the powerhouse. It's a magnificent place. We like it. Are you the foreman? Yes. Do you work long hours? No, we work in three shifts. I come on at six and stay until two o'clock. My relief goes on until ten. Then I come on at six again. And your men work the same hours as yourself? Yes, it's a small shift. Only eight men. All the machinery is automatic. Well, excuse me. I got to get busy. And I better go before they lock the gate and I can't get out.
Come in, come in. Oh, you know, I use the beautiful new song tonight. And I sing for you in English. That's fine. Oh, I'm so happy you come tonight. Marie, I've got a lot of questions to ask you, and I want you to answer them straight. So, I tell Bogard, I don't want this commission. I sent some other way to go home. Good. Now, what did Tanoki talk to you about the night you went to his place? He asked me, I know any secrets about French dredges. What secrets about the French dredges? I don't know any secrets. What did Tanoki want you to do? He said for me go and see the French dredges. Why? He said, maybe there, you find a way to go back to France. Oh, Chinooki, make bad jokes. Come on, Marie, didn't you hear my announcement? Put somebody else on. I want to talk to Marie. This would happen the night I've got the wildest bunch of hyenas I've ever had in the house. Oh, no, my son. You've got worse than your song to worry about. Listen, Marie, can't you understand that I'm trying to save you from prison? Prison? I do, I do not think. Fooling around with military secrets in a fortified zone is a dangerous business. I don't know. What did you talk about? I'm trying to help you, Marie. Can't you understand that I'm trying to help you? Yes. That's what you say. But all you do is ask me questions. I don't know any answers. to many countries, Marie. And it can take you home. But it also flows to a place which is not on the map and where it don't smell nice with the nose and where the gooses don't say quack, quack, bonjour, hello, Marie. <laughs> you can't go home now. You've got to stay here until this mystery is cleared up. Now, don't compel me to keep you here by force. I don't care what you do. I go too many big things. I want to go home. Now I go. Did you hear what I say? Now I go. Code message, sir. The fleet will start through the canal at 2 a.m. tomorrow. Will you please come in? So your gentleman friend did not send you home after all? No. And you have come to Brogard, who always keeps his promise. First your commission. Fifty dollars. Will need it. Now your ticket. You have no passport, so I will send you on a ship in care of the captain. Some friends of mine will take you aboard with them at the other end of the canal. Mr. Boy, can I go home? First, you will not mind to do something for me. Fleet? No, no, no. I know about the fleet. It goes tomorrow. This is just a little personal matter. I want you to see Mr. Tenoki. Did you notice yesterday as I stood in the doorway of the Power House talking to Mr. Wales, a nice poor man, that we looked very much alike? Yes, yes sir. sir. 
Did you get the automobile? Yes, sir. Who's going to drive? Johnson, one of our men. I've prepared this map for you. This is the powerhouse. Here is where the poor man lives. Now you wait at this point of the road until the poor man comes along. You persuade him to get into the car. You bring him down to the French stretchers where I will view and change clothes with the poor man. At six o'clock I will be in the powerhouse and go on duty with the night shift. Our new boxes have been made and stenciled for the Japanese dry goods that will cover up Tenoki's name. You take those boxes to the railroad station. You leave them there as the evening train is discharging its passengers. By telephone, I will have an order issued for an army truck to pick up those boxes and deliver them at the powerhouse. I say, you have it figured to the very letter, haven't you? For a year, I've studied every detail, and I know the powerhouse and its routine as well as I know this room. At 2 a.m., I will go off duty with the night shift. I will have set the time detonator for 5.30. Now, the fleet starts at 2 o'clock. All the ships will be in the canal by 5. We got to work fast. I meet you at the French trenches. I wonder what Timonoki's motive was in trying to get that French girl to visit these old dredges. Well, you never can tell. Maybe it was just his sympathetic nature. You know, French girl, French dredges. Just here is where the body of Timonoki's clerk was found. Mm-hmm. He talked too much, asked too many questions. What are you going to do? I'm just going to take a look. I wouldn't do that, Corbett. There's probably every poisonous reptile known to the tropics in that pit. Don't do that. You can't tell what you'll find. Oh, yes, I can. I've already found it. What? Got a knife? Here. No, 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 a knife. Here, take this. Yeah. The missing cargo of the Hetty King. And all assigned to G. Tanoki. There's your frog sticker. Thank you. Corbett? That building over there. Yes, you're. With that out of commission, the canal stops. We must arrest Tanoki at once. Oh, no. That's the next to the last thing we'll do. Arrest him. Well, we must question him. We're going to do that right here. If you stay here and keep your eye on the cargo and the rest of the uh, beauties of nature, I'll run and fetch our poetical friend. Righto. Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars for everything? Sí, por todo, porque todo lo que necesito para hacer yo negocio tengo que hacerlo. Fifteen dollars, all I can give you. Oh, monsieur, I can't fifteen dollars. Well, that's my price. I can give you no more than fifteen dollars. Oh. That's all I can offer you. Oh, please, monsieur. Eighteen dollars. Oh, for eighteen dollars. If you were asked to visit the French dredges with a charming American gentleman, I would visit any place with American gentlemen. All right. Let's go. Cigarette? <laughs> a new dinner plan. Better look after this. Now, may I know, please, why you wish me to be here? Yes, to explain four things to me. Why you come here to fish, the mystery of your clerk's death, and why you asked that French girl to come here. But that is only three things. Well, the fourth is in that dredge pit over there. I think you'll recognize it. Come on over and have a look. Have a good look. And the cases are gone. What cases? The cases of dynamite consigned to you. Come on, Tanoki, where are they? What is it? Four boxes consigned to Henry Wells, the foreman. Just a minute. What have you got here? I think he came over an evening train. We got orders to pick him up the station, sir. Mr. Wells? Mrs. Wells speaking. Yes? All right, I know about it. Get him a load and bring it in. 
Behind me, Dow. All right, boys. Unload him and bring him in. The foreman will be right down. I am here for same reason that British government send Mr. Radcliffe, and for same reason that American government send Dr. Corbett to find this man, Reiner, whose business it is to create wars and is being highly paid by certain individuals who desire war because war brings to them immense profits. Have you any idea of Reiner's identity? Yesterday, steamship Hetty King bring Japanese-made explosives consigned to me labeled dry goods. Members of crew of Hetty King pay many visits to the shop of my neighbor, Mr. Brogar. I'm holding the Hetty King under guard at the other end of the canal. Today, I received message delivered by a young lady telling me to go to Powerhouse Gate tonight and ask for Mr. Brogar. Brogar nor anyone else couldn't get into the Powerhouse. During the passage of the fleet, every building, every foot of the canal is heavily patrolled both by Army and Navy. If I go to the Powerhouse tonight and ask for Mr. Brogar, and it so happens there is some disaster, it will appear that I was the cause of the damage and that my visit there was attempt to throw blame on Mr. Brogar. The young woman who brought that message, was she French? Yes, sir, French. General, this girl is going to be of great service to us. The man who sent that message is Reiner. General, may I suggest that you make it possible for Mr. Tanoki to enter the powerhouse tonight and Mr. Tanoki, you take the girl with you. I'll go to Brogard's shop. See if you can find the light. I wonder if Tanoki double-crossed me. What do you say, sir? He's notify your authorities. Let him investigate the cause of death. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I wonder why he shaved off his mustache. Notify your authorities, but don't let his body be moved until I get back. I have a telephone on case.
Maybe you should have brought Lily. Oh, I'm glad you come. <laughs> For you. Mmm, nice to smell with the nose, huh? Oh, yes, thank you very much. Let me put them in water. Yes, do. You are feeling much better today. Oh, sure, sure. The doctor says by next week she'll be well enough to go back home and see her friends. I don't want to go home. You're my best friend. How can you beat that? In Japan, we say a woman's mind is like the moon. It changes with the day. Well, I'm going to Paris. Nobody's going to Paris. Where is Marie going? I'm going with my best friend. Quack, quack. Bonjour. Hello, Marie. <laughs> <laughs>